Many patients dream under anesthesia here with me, but most don't know that those vivid anesthesia dreams can unlock a powerful healing potential. This completely upends our understanding of the brain under the coma of anesthesia because we thought the brain just turns off once surgery starts. But recent data from Stanford University turns this upside down. I'll share the latest research and real life experiences about what actually happens in your brain when you're supposed to be asleep and how those dreaming experiences can be life-saving in some patients, which I've also witnessed firsthand many, many times. Most patients think of surgery as traumatic because you're being cut open after all, and it can lead to medical PTSD if it's not managed well. But what if the surgery could be gentle so the experience could instead focus on the anesthesia and what happens in your brain instead? We know that positive affirmations in the form of headphones under general anesthesia there can make a big difference in how some patients wake up after surgery, meaning the auditory processing parts of your brain are still active when you're asleep. And if you think this is spooky, you are not alone. Even the journal titled the edition with this article as Dr. Strange. More recently, researchers at Stanford University shared two stories of exactly this experience, which disrupts our understanding of the brain during surgery. The first story was from a patient whose anesthesia dream saved her life after surgery. This was a 57-year-old white woman with no active drug or alcohol use at the time of surgery. She was physically healthy and was having surgery for a breast lumpectomy and a lymph node biopsy, which in and of itself can be traumatic. She wasn't taking any psychiatric medications at the time, but she was having one nightmare a week about her son who died from suicide previously. To quote the paper, she had two euphoric intraoperative dreams. In one, she experienced her son's birth again, which was originally traumatic, but now as deeply joyful. In a second, she spent time with her adult son and experienced cathartic relief. One month after surgery, she no longer met criteria for PTSD. She also had improvement in depression, anxiety, and sleep, as you see here. She reported not having another nightmare in over 18 months, and that her experience during surgery saved her life. The second patient was also physically healthy, but a little older, 72 years old. She had occasional nightmares from the alcohol poisoning and death of her son at a frat party hazing. It had been years, but she still suffered from PTSD because of her son's death. She also dreamed under anesthesia about being with her son and other family members and described the dream as very positive. After her surgery, she didn't meet the criteria for PTSD anymore, similar to the first patient. Her anxiety and depression also improved after surgery, and she didn't have any nightmares after either. And there are so many other stories. Look at this one from a patient who had hand surgery from a knife attack wound who found significant healing from the acute stress disorder after the surgery was over. It's like she relived the experience and changed the narrative and how it affected her brain and body. While this might sound far-fetched, we know that dreamlike activity happens in the brain under anesthesia. Some of these dreams may be occurring near the end of surgery as the anesthesia lightens up to allow the patient to wake up, which has critical implications for what the doctors are doing to the patients in this critical time. This is also not surprising given our understanding of the anesthetic ketamine, which is well known for its potential to relieve symptoms of depression and PTSD. It's one of the most common medications I use with my patients struggling with treatment-resistant depression or PTSD because of its ability to change the relationship with triggers and to foster fear extinction and consolidation. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, most patients and many doctors don't understand this potential or the words fear extinction or consolidation to understand what's happening in the brain. So here's the quick review. Consolidation is the process of disrupting the storage of traumatic memories. The belief is that when you have a traumatic experience, it gets stored in a part of the brain that makes you prone to reliving that trauma every time you recall that memory. Triggers that make us recall those traumatic memories can be overwhelming to the central nervous system and can cause significant hypervigilance and hyperarousal, or what we might call fight-flight responses or strong startle responses. These can be incredibly painful and we call these unconsolidated memories. 
The process of consolidation, therefore, refers to storing these memories like an ordinary memory that might not be pleasant, but also doesn't overwhelm your nervous system with that gripping fear or hyperarousal. Fear extinction, as the name suggests, is when the fear that fuels that trigger is abolished. It's like being afraid of spiders and having an experience that takes away your fear of spiders. I actually did this myself with a tarantula experience in Mexico City, but that's another story. So back to anesthesia, the neuroplasticity of these medications, and ketamine in particular, is believed to facilitate fear extinction and consolidation in patients with PTSD. Ketamine doesn't erase that memory but it can change the relationship with that memory in a more healing and productive way. If you're learning something new, please share what you've learned with others and hit that like button. I have many other videos linked below on the altered state of consciousness of IV ketamine that you might find eye-opening. So be sure to check those out as well. So if general anesthesia has been around for over a hundred years, why have doctors not noticed this until now? Good question. Firstly, there appear to be differences in different anesthesia medications that can produce these healing dreams or experiences like propofol or ketamine can. And these are much new newer than the OG anesthetic agents like ether from the 1800s. So it appears like the older anesthesia agents just didn't have the same potential maybe. Secondly, and this is key, not all surgeries promote a healing environment for your mind. We have a saying after all that surgery can fix the body but break the mind and it might have to do with that experience. And I believe it comes from unoptimized surgical experiences because your environment plays a big role in what happens to your brain in altered states of consciousness. I always tell my patients before surgery or while preparing for an IV ketamine infusion that it's like your sleep at night. Your mindset and environment determine how restored and rejuvenated you might feel in the morning when you wake up. Remember that your REM sleep at night when you're dreaming is the most ubiquitous this altered state of consciousness. And that's why things like sleep hygiene are so important for your mental health around sleep, just like the environment and mindset before surgery and ketamine infusion therapy. The data is still coming, but it appears to support this. I believe it's why this study in rats showed that anesthesia after a traumatic event can actually reinforce that traumatic event and may actually hurt social functioning. Rats and humans are obviously very different, but I bet the rats didn't have a healing environment around them during the traumatic event or the anesthesia. That all being said, it's very important not to treat anesthesia as a cure-all panacea for trauma and mental health. Many patients are terrified of surgery and anesthesia and the pain after waking up and they bring that fear into the operating room with them. And things only get worse if they're hungry from fasting, cold because it's freezing in the operating room, and nearly naked for surgery in that hospital gown. And those fears can be counterproductive when we're trying to heal trauma. The researchers at Stanford and myself with patients emphasize the importance of the environment and mindset before journeying into an altered state of consciousness. And it's no different than how you should be preparing for sleep with sleep hygiene or before a meditative experience. From the tens of thousands of viewer comments I've read about how traumatic surgery was for them, my belief is that healing anesthesia dreams are blocked by these uncomfortable surgery environments. Surgical pain and mean doctors and nurses don't help either. What was your experience around surgery like? Let me know in the comments below. If we want to harness the healing potential of anesthesia dreams, including with IV ketamine, we need to help our patients feel heard, comfortable, and safe long before the medicine starts. It's why I founded my own practice with IV ketamine to help patients on their healing journeys without the distraction or dangers of surgery. It can also help patients potentially avoid the side effects of traditional antidepressants and anti-anxiety medications. You can learn more about my practice in San Francisco by visiting our website www.claris-health.com linked in the description below. And by subscribing to keep up with all of my medical videos. These powerful altered states of consciousness are not panaceas or miracle cures and you need to speak with your doctor before embarking on one. Whether it's through anesthesia and surgery, IV ketamine, or even your dreams while sleeping or through meditation. However, this research does give us powerful tools to help harness that inner healing potential and hopefully with far fewer side effects. And remember, you have more power over your health than you've probably ever been told.